This right here is my latest project vehicle. It's a brand new 200 series, the first new car I've ever owned. It's less than 20 hours old. We're about to cut it in half. <laughs> Wish me luck. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> Well guys, let me formally introduce you to my brand new build. Now this is a brand spanking new 200 series Land Cruiser. It's the first new car I've ever bought in my life. So you're probably thinking, why a 200 series Land Cruiser? Well, in my opinion, they're one of the best bases to work from. Now at the moment, yeah, it looks like a soccer mom's car, but believe me, when we're done here at DMW and chop this thing in half and make it the ultimate dual cab, it's gonna be the perfect remote area tour. It's gonna to be able to tow my boat to really remote places, and that's exactly what I want it for. Increase the GVM up to four and a half tonne, it's gonna be one heck of a tourer. Now, this won't be the first CHOP 200 series build you'll ever see, but this will be the first time you get to see in detail what's required when we convert a 200 series into a dual cab, and also chop the chassis and extend that along. So we're gonna take you through the full build process and show you stuff that you wouldn't have seen anywhere else. So buckle in, because trust me when I say this, the engineering that goes into these builds is something that'll blow you away. Well, who better to give a better insight about why you'd want to chop a 200 series in half than Ruben, the owner of DMW. So if we look at obviously why we're doing this, um, a 79 series is a fantastic uh, vehicle. I've owned one, I've owned it for about six years. I've done just about every mod you can sort of do to it. Now, if you were to get a 79 series and try and spec it up to the level of a 200 series, it's gonna set you back probably seventy or $80,000, probably more than the price of the vehicle to spec it up. Like I'm talking, if you want an automatic transmission, there goes about $30,000. If you want um, coils in the rear end, there's probably another twenty to 30000 for coils in the rear end. Extend that chassis, all that sort of stuff, that you're gonna get in a 200 series stock standard. Not to mention it's more powerful, it's better for towing, and I've got a big plate boat that I plan to take to some very remote areas. So it just made sense to me. Um, you know, I've, I'm, I've had a great run with that 79, absolutely love 79s but I'm ready for a new build, mate. And um, this one, when it's done, is surely gonna tick all the boxes. One thing Ruben pointed out before was the size of the chassis on a 200 compared to a 79. Yeah, it's so absolutely massive, massive, isn't it? It's 190 mil by 90 in the 200 and 140 by 50 mil in a 79. The 79. Yeah. So this just gives you a, a big base to work on to make a very solid vehicle. And I can't wait to get right into the build, but to be honest with you, I can wait for the next step because the next step is getting a grinder out and chopping it about there. And you know, I'm one of those blokes, mate, even on an old 80 series, I really struggle getting a hole saw drill and putting a snorkel in the side in one guard, let alone getting a brand new car I haven't even driven yet and trying to chop it in half. But didn't worry on Daryl. Yeah, <laughs> didn't worry me on Daryl, mate. Look, on an Nissan, I can handle it for sure. I'll chop those things all day. But a Toyota, mate, that's another story. Off it goes, mate. Chop, chop, here we go. All right, let's get into it. Let's get those grinders out, I reckon. Make some magic, eh? Oh, that noise. Wrong. Oh, that's the biggest scratch I've ever done without my hand in the steering wheel. <laughs> oh, I, did this, I did this line, so you might want to measure it again, just in case, but it's not gonna turn into a single cap, is it? Right, the 200 is all stripped out. It's all measured. Um, I measured this side, Matt. You want to double check it, mate? Or? No, I trust <laughs> you. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. Right, oh, wish me luck. Just about done. A couple more cuts and the whole cab's gonna come off and you'll get to see what it's gonna look like. I'm very excited. Look at that. Oh, it's free. There it is. It's chopped, mate. It's officially a ute, just like that. Uh -huh. Doesn't take long on the grinder, but the next bit, uh, I've been told, takes a long time. It's a lot of skillful work goes into it. That's where I bow out. But that is looking, well, it looks like it's chopped enough at the moment, but it's looking pretty cool. All right, off she goes. 
<laughs> Tell you about. <laughs> Well, Matt's done the bulk of the work here, but he insisted that I had a bit of a chop. Like, when do you get a chance to chop a brand new 200 chassis? So, I wanna give it a bit of a go, nearly done. And um, the aim is, once this is completely cut, it's gonna drag this straight out. So, the vehicle will officially be in three pieces. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> how good's that? Well, how good's this? Talk about progress. The vehicle is now in three pieces and I couldn't be more excited. Most people would be cringing at this, but I'll tell you what, the end product is gonna be absolutely amazing. Now, there's a stack of fabrication that needs to go through to get the rear wall on. We're gonna put the 650 extension on, get this thing driving again, and um, I'll tell you what, can't wait. So over the next few weeks, it's gonna be absolutely full on, and the result's gonna be nothing short of amazing. It is quarter past 12, the next day, and this is where Matt's up to. All the roll bar is in. Look at this, Sean. Your cut has been used. You did a cracking job, apparently. All right, it's been exactly a week to the day. I'm back down here at DMW. Um, Ruben said, you better get in quick because a lot of work has happened on the big 200. Now, he sent me a couple of progress shots early in the week, but he's been quiet for a few days. He's refused to show me anymore, so I've just come straight up here. I've got to have a look. You better follow me. So, Sean, here we've got the back half of the 200 series. It's already been chopped and wheeled outside. Um, the boys have already started doing some work on this one. This is off a, a second-hand car that we're doing at the moment. Yep. And as you can see, this one's going to be a 650 extension anyway. And uh, these are the big braces that I was telling you about that go Far right out. up the centre of the chassis. <laughs> go how big they are. They're huge. They're in thicker than the, the standard chassis. Yeah, absolutely. Well. They go roughly 300 down on this side to, back to the rear wheel and roughly 400 mil up the front. So that, what that does is it, it shares the stress load and sends it all through the chassis. Yep. Yeah. And, and then, then, you, then these are all the plug welds that you're talking about before? Yeah, roughly 180 plug welds per chassis extension. 180? Yeah. That's a lot of work, isn't it? And then this one goes on the top. So once they yeah. go together, this one goes on the top. As you can see, all laser cut um, for the plug welds. And then it's got some big ones on the top as well. That, that, yeah, right. Yeah. So the end result is super strong, over-engineered. Yeah. And that's if you compare that with a 79 series chassis, you know, I own a 79, it's... This is, oh, it's nearly double. It looks huge compared to like a 79 hmm. series chassis. You no know, wonder why you get so much strength in it. Because I think a lot of people don't realise how much work's involved in the chassis extension and, and the chop of a vehicle in total. But especially this, there's so much engineering behind the scenes. All most people see is a shiny black chassis and just a good looking rig at the end of it. Yeah. But there's so much in it that makes it so strong. That's yeah. what's so exciting about this project. And, and with all the welds as well, there's about 3.6 to 4 metres of actual weld that go into the chassis extension as well. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? And mate, the end result is it looks factory. Like I was just having a quick look and I was, I was trying to work out where the factory chassis ended, where the plating began and when the factory um, the chassis continued again. And it's very hard to see. It's such a neat factory. It just looks like a beefy version of a 200. It's yeah. It, it, look, that's the, the aim that we're looking for. We don't want people to go and say, hey, look, look at that. That's how the yeah, chassis stands, extension. It stands yeah. out. Yeah. Well, it's almost a shame, mate, because now it goes into paint, doesn't it? You paint this up and... Certainly. And people won't be able to see just how awesome the worlds are and how, how over-engineered this is. Now you've also got another, this is reinforcement in here. Yeah, this is the centre bearing mount. Okay. So we extend the factory drive shaft and we put a centre bearing in it. Yeah. So mate, essentially it's a new tail shaft from here to the centre bearing That's from the transfer correct. and yeah. then the factory. All factory from here back. Okay. And, and that'll keep the same angle as well from factory as well. Because yeah, you you're coming straight back into there. That is, is going to be an absolute weapon. There's so many things that go in behind the scenes that you don't really get to appreciate until you come and look at the build process and, and all the effort that goes into it. Now, speaking of the diff, let's have a close look at that because that's cool. Yeah. So, mate, speaking of this diff, there's obviously a lot of um, over-engineering that's taken place here. 
run through the bracing side of things. What have you done here? So we run the bottom disc stiffener here and the top disc stiffener. So look, these are strong enough factory to hold four and a half tonne, no worries at all. We just wanted to go the extra mile and do the extra engineering. So, you know, by the time you go down corrugated rows and different things like that at max weight, yep. you know, you don't want anything happening. So and you chuck a canopy on the back of it, put a stack of weight over that yeah. rear axle, you make, you make sure it's over engineered. Well, it looks beasty, mate. I've only ever seen like comp trucks run diffs like this. <laughs> and um, to think this is in a tourer, a yeah. fishing slash remote area tourer, how good is this? This is really cool. Back on the move. Well, mate, big step in the build. It's come out of the fabrication bay. It's rolling now. It looks like a dual cab too. It is a, two, a 200 dual cab. This is insane. It's got a rear wall on it, mate. Run us through how you've got this looking so factory. Well, what we did was we wanted the shapes and everything like that to match the dual cabs that are on the market that come from a brand name. So we decided to make sure there's a few angles in the places and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. we really wanted an edge that was you know, ergonomically satisfying to the public. So what we did was we decided to run the big integrated roll bar in there, which does two things. It lets it these weld to it without putting too much distortion. And that's why we don't need too much body filler yeah. in it. Yeah. So and there's a lot of steel, not much body filler. That's that's unlike a lot of other chops in the market. I've seen a lot of chops and they're and not like that. The main filler is just where the two sheets meet. So they come together on the side here and on the back. Yep. And then you have it fully welded down there. And just between the two sizes of the sheet is where the filler goes. A lot of people probably look and go, why doesn't it have the dimples on the back like, mm. you know, a lot of other cuts. But you've got the strength in this, don't you? Well, we certainly do. There's all RHS framework through there. And the Blind reason why it. we have a flat wall is, and like if you're touring and you're going on lots of dirt roads and all that sort of stuff, when you've got the ribs in there, yep. they build up dust and they start to rust out. Now, all that just runs straight off. You've got no chance of corrosion. Yeah, it looks mint, mate. It's just the little attention to detail. I've seen a lot of different chops in the market, but this one here just looks like if two, like Toyota was supposed to build a 200 series from factory that was a dual okay. cab, that's what they'd do. Ruben, look, another thing that separates your chops from a lot of others that I've seen, mate, is this little storage compartment in here. Now you guys do this very different to a lot of other manufacturers out there. Yeah, we actually utilise the whole of the wheel arch space. Yeah. Okay, and then it all gets hand fabricated. So you, you put your seal on there, okay, it's all dust proof and all that sort of stuff, but you get massive amounts of space. So much space, look, I can put my whole arm in there and there's a proper storage unit. Because you've got it on this sort of strut here, you can use every single accessible bit of room in there. So you guys have obviously thought about that a hell of a lot. Absolutely, yeah, and we use this type of hinge here because it's nice and easy to get hold of. If you bang the door off, you can always replace that very easily. Yep, yeah. and this is all all steel, yep. unlike a lot of other ones. It's all steel, so it's super strong. Yeah, and you can use that as a bit of a bench, whatever, you make your yep. coffee, put it on well, there. Graham could, he could stand here, mate, and make his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, that's fantastic. The boys and you have done an amazing job yeah. so far. Let's say we get this into um, the next workshop and um, let the boys have a go at it, eh? Let's begin. I want to take this opportunity to show you exactly why I've decided to extend the chassis on my 200 series. So this is my one. It's got 650 mil extension in the chassis. This one here is a stock standard one. As you can see where the rear tire is, um, on mine it'd be where this toolbox is. So you can see it's come out quite a long way. Now Ruben, a 650 mil chassis extension is very common. You're saying it's the most popular chassis extension when someone chops a 200. Why is that? Uh, because if you leave the wheel in its original space, yep. and you put a, even a shorter tray on it, all of your weight carrying is back past the axle. So when you move at 650 mil, it spreads your load a lot better. Exactly right. Well, I want to have a full size canopy and tray on the back of this one, so a fair bit of weight. I'm also going to be towing a big boat as well. So I think with that 650 mil chassis extension, a lot of that weight is going to be between the axles, and that's exactly where you want the weight when you're setting any vehicle up. It doesn't matter if it's a Dirty 30 or an 80 series or any vehicle you've got, uh, you know, a D-Max, 
You want to try and get as much of that weight in between. The axle is going to ride a lot better, but also carry that weight so much better. Now you guys do a range of different sizes though in chassis extensions. So, so some customers choose not to even go a chassis extension. That's correct. That's probably quite rare. But you, you were saying before, what, 300? 300, 400, 650 and 750. Yep. And we can do in between, but that's our most common. And you've got in your um, personal one, mate, the, um, when you're taking on a series of trips with us, um, 750 in that chassis. I like the 750 because I get the extra long tray yeah. and I've got my little toolboxes for a bit extra storage in front of the wheel, but that's just personal preference. I guess it's a good tip as well. If you're looking to chop a vehicle or you're looking to run a big tray or a big canopy on your vehicle, um, doesn't matter if you've got a 79 series or any sort of ute, to try and get that weight distribution just right. So if you want a big tray, big canopy, you want to make sure that you've got that rear axle in a position where it's going to carry that weight. And um, on this vehicle, you can see, you can imagine that with a tray and a canopy, most of that weight is going to be this side of the axle, which means it's going to ride really well. Well guys, I'm super excited to share this build with you. Have a go with what's behind me. In the last few weeks, we've been able to take a stock standard 200 series and turn it into this. If you ask me, this is the platform to build the ultimate touring four wheel drive. Something that will be able to take a boat to some of the most remote areas in Australia, catch dream fish, and also do it in style. So stay tuned for the next episode. We go through legalities, GVM upgrades. We also put a tray and canopy on the back of this weapon. Now's a bit on a lean on you guys to get a little bit inspiration of what I should do for this build. As you can see, we're at a point in the build now where we're going to start adding accessories and start to turn this into an absolute touring weapon. So if you guys have got any ideas of what I should do to this vehicle, must do accessories, mods, all that sort of stuff, put them in the comments below because I'm really keen to go through that, get a bit of your ideas into this build. But for now, I'll see you around next time on Full Drive 24-7.